awful lot of skill, an awful lot of talent. He he's got he's he's like uh, like Bull Durham, you know the the million dollar arm and the ten cent head. That's Michael Beasley, <laughs> except the basketball version, million dollar million dollar shot and the ten cent head. But the head seems to be catching up a little bit. The head might be you know like a ten dollar head now instead of a ten cent head. But he's a guy who I'd I'd like to see with the Knicks. But he he's he's now going going to be a free agent after this year. Uh, and and there's. There's been some rumor that he might wind up in Golden State because he's real close with, with Kevin Durant. Those, those guys grew up together in Baltimore. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if Durant tries to pull a few strings out in, out in Golden State and says, hey, you know, sign my boy Bees. He can, he can help us. You know, he can be a guy off the bench who can give us some offense, and he's probably not going to cost very much. Because Beasley at this point, he's looking, you know, he's, looking, he's, he's never going to break the bank on a contract at this point. But – He's a guy. If you sign him for for like the mid level exception, like five five million dollars, I'm sure he'd be happy with that. And and to go to a team like Golden State, where you got a chance to win a title for the next few years, why not? I I, I really I can't see him staying with the Knicks, but I think he would help them if he stayed. Well, it, it's it's been such a quiet year, and 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 this is the type of thing that the Nets, who are worse than the Knicks, hard to believe. Well, the Nets that's talking about quiet, right? <laughs> um, this is the type of thing when you're the Nets and you're playing in Brooklyn, and let's be honest, Brooklyn's the hotbed of basketball in New York. Yeah, you know, this is the place where maybe you can win some Nick fans to come over to the Nets, and they've been even worse. They've been even well, worse. They're only one game worse. I mean, they're basically the same. <laughs> we're, we're talking uh, the Knicks are twenty eight and fifty two. The Nets are twenty seven and fifty three. This. And then the Knicks have two games left again, both against the Cavaliers. They have a home and home with the Cavaliers, really? and. I, I don't even know what the Nets have left, but I mean, let's let's not sit here and, and compare the two of them. I mean, they're both lousy, so there's there's no point in 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 making any kind of comparison. Um, yeah, in fact, the Nets have Chicago and Boston uh, as their last two games. And by the way, the, the Celtics they're not winning the title. Kyrie Irving is done for the season, so the Celtics are not not going to be doing anything in the playoffs. That's a team. That's actually a team right now that I would want to play in the playoffs. They've gone from 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 being a scary team in the playoffs and and to me being a favorite to come out of the East to now they're done. And that, and that quickly, yeah. Kyrie, Kyrie ran, he he runs the show there, and to to have to have it happen now where he's done for the season, there's not enough time to figure it out and 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 to get to get things back to where they need to be. I mean, they're still scrambling. They're they're trying to figure out who's going to do what at certain times. And and that's that's what the point guard is. That's why the point guard is so important, is because he runs the show. So now if you just drop somebody else in there and say, All right, go run the show, well everybody's used to how Kyrie runs the show. Now right. you have to learn the new point guard and what his tendencies are. You can't do that in, in a couple of games. It just doesn't work. So, you know, I mean you know, the other thing that I wanted I wanted to point out, the Philadelphia seventy sixers. Trust the process, baby. Well, last year they were horrible. They got their 50th win yesterday. I know. This year they do good. So, Nick fans, it is possible. But you, you, got, you, you, actually, you actually have to do something with your draft picks, first of all, which I, you know, I hate to say it. Frank Neal Kina is not that guy. No. But this, this is how in today's NBA, and I know, I know that uh, uh, the, the commissioner, Adam Silver, is probably not happy about these developments – but this is this is how you need to do it in the NBA these days. You have to you have to tank, and you have to get the draft picks, and you have to you. And, and above but all, the, you have to you have to use those draft picks in a good but way. But the problem with tanking, whether it's on purpose or not, um, and I hope it's never on purpose. It's always on purpose. What are you talking about? But but that's so bad for the, for the fans. It's bad for the fans. It's bad for the league. It's bad. It's say, bad. It's a bad system too. But what have the Knicks been doing for twenty years? I don't know if they're losing. But are they tanking on purpose? No, but well, that's, that's that's worse. Well, I'm just saying. Don't sit here and try and and win 28 games, and then say, "Oh well, geez, we just had some bad luck." No, you're awful. You, you're awful. Trade like everybody and 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 go for the number one pick. So to to sit here and and say, "Well, we're we're just we're just going to be bad. We're not going to be really bad." Okay, that's I agree. it's pointless. So to sit here and I mean. Look at the six, the Sixers. First of all, the Sixers have played most of the season without Markel Fultz, who was the number one overall pick last season. So they they they'll, they'll be even better next year. Yeah. Well, but this is what I said a couple of years ago when when we were talking about them and and this whole tanking thing and how bad it was. But now you have Ben Simmons, you have Markel Fultz, you have 
Joel Embiid, you you got a nice core there, a real nice core. I have no doubt about that. So, they, I'm telling you, this is a team. Look, it's going to be for the next five years in the East. It's going to be the Celtics and the Sixers. And I hate to say that because I hate both of those teams, but it, that's what it's going to be for the next five years. Okay, brother, we're starting to um, hit the end of the show. Odell Beckman or Beckham, I Beckham. should say, yes. uh, says he will report to this voluntary off-season workout that's about to happen for the Giants. Finally, he's getting some good advice. Finally. Do you think he's staying around? There's been it's been very quiet about him lately. I th- I think at this point they they might be keeping him. Well. This is a good first step. He's supposed to be showing up at the, at the voluntary workouts today. Uh, he said he was going to be there, so I, I have every reason to believe he will be there. Um, he, he will actually uh, go through uh, some some working out in the gym. Uh, he's going to he's going to check in, meet with some people, as as he was quoted as saying by ESPN, uh, which which is good because this is, he's he keeps making noise that he wants the big contract. All right, Odell Beckham broke his ankle last year. He had surgery. He needs to show the Giants franchise that he is still the same player he was. If, if he thinks that, that, that holding out from training camp and well, is, is, if he thinks that that's the way to get the contract that he wants, he, he's sadly misinformed. You're talking about a major injury. You're talking about surgery. The Giants need to see what they have, and they need to see him going through an NFL game. The money will be there. So if that's Odell Beckham's problem, he, he needs to either find better representation or better advice because he's he's coming off that 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 episode with, with the hotel room in Paris, right, right. With with the uh, you know, did he have a joint? Did he not have a joint? Was there cocaine in the room? Was there not cocaine in the room? Uh, that that's a bad optic, and he needs to show the Giants that he's a grown up, that he can act like a mature adult, and that he's not going going to embarrass the franchise. Because if he wants the kind of contract that he wants, then he needs to also be tradable. Because if he does more stupid stuff like that, now he's holding the Giants hostage because they won't be able to unload his contract. And that's why teams don't want to sign huge money deals to guys who are unreliable. And that's what Odell Beckham Jr. is still right now. He's a great receiver on the field. Talent-wise, I have no doubts that he is one of the – the three best receivers in the NFL. But you need to show more than that if you're looking for the kind of contract. He wants like $20 million a year, which, which is insane to he's pay not, a receiver. He's not going to get it. I don't think he'll get it either. But there might be a team out there, like, like the Los Angeles Rams have been the team that everybody was talking about. They just got a receiver, though, last week. So that pretty much takes them out of any trade for Odell Beckham Jr. Right. But will there be a team that's on the verge or thinks they're on the verge of winning a Super Bowl – who will say, you know what, Beckham can get it for us. Let's give the Giants a bunch of draft picks and let's get him signed to a contract for uh, five years for like $90 million and guarantee $60 million of it or whatever. whatever you know, I'm just throwing numbers out there. Right. But if a team decides that we're that close and he's the guy that's going to put us over the top, then, yeah, all it takes is one team. It's, 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 it's what everybody says. It's not like 30 teams have to approve all this. It takes one team. To be on in that in that position where they say, "All right, you know this is this is the guy, this is the guy, and we're going to get him, and we're going to win a Super Bowl this year," and that's all it takes. That's all it takes. A um, couple of things before uh, we get to uh, uh, soccer. There was a story in Newsday this week that uh, there's some land out in Ronkonkoma, and one of the plans that someone's offering is to build another arena for the area out in Ronkonkoma. Why? Uh, I don't know. Team. I don't know. They didn't say. They just thought that it might be a good idea to have another arena that's not going to get full use in this area. You know, the Coliseum across the street, nothing against it, not getting used the way they said it would. You have an arena in Belmont that's going to be built in the next few years, which will get some use. You got the Barclays, which is pretty big. You got the Garden, which is always big. A t- uh, arena out east, a big arena, 17,000, not good. If you did the 10,000 seat or a, long, old, a newer version of Long Island Arena, Maybe you can get that, but but not not seventeen five. Well, my quick advice on that, brother. What? Stupid people, save yeah. your money. Yeah, save your people. Uh, anyway, you uh, wanted to mention uh, the the humble Broncos. This is such a yeah. sad story. Yes, yeah, some some very sad, tragic story actually from uh, from the world of hockey. Um, on on Friday night, uh, a Canadian junior team 
uh, called the Humboldt Broncos, uh, wound up with uh, 15 members of the organization die in a bus crash. Um, it's it's this is the part of hockey that most people don't see, especially people in the states, because the junior junior hockey. In, in Canada is obviously a huge thing. All right. Canadian kids from all over the country are playing junior in junior programs. And the way they get from place to place is by bus. Sure. And a lot of times those buses are driving in the dead of night with, you know, the players are all, you know, sprawled out in the seats and, and sleeping on the bus. And that's – it's a rite of passage for, for pretty much any kid in Canada that's growing up playing hockey is that's what you're going to do. And apparently the bus – Hit a truck that was carrying peat moss. No, no, the tr- uh, the, the truck, peat moss. The truck t boned the bus. Oh, all right. Well, there you go. So, um, but you know these these players are for the most part teenagers. Yeah. You know, usually between like sixteen and twenty, uh, they're kids with with you know dreaming about the NHL or dreaming about going to a college program. But uh, it is big time. I mean, oh yeah, it's they, definitely big. It's, these are these are good players and these, players with futures. Uh, I, mean, I, co- I covered a couple kids at RPI who who were products of the Humboldt system. So I mean, like I said, these kids, if they're not going, if they're not going pro, then chances are they're going to college, right? And and you know, using hockey to get themselves a better ed- education and improve their lives. But these are good players. And they they had a, I was reading the, one of the people whose heart was uh, they have a radio announcer. You know, the, the, that's how big yeah. this is in in Canada. The the junior teams we think they're almost high school, but it's a little bit beyond that. It's more like a, kind of a minor league system. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not like necessarily like the, you know, the Islanders obviously have their, their minor league team. Right. But, I mean, those are quote-unquote adults. Those right, are, right. These, these kids are technically, I guess, in, in some ways professional, but they also retain their amateur status as far as the colleges go in the NCAA. So it, it's, 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 it's the Canadian – Junior, it's the, it's, it's yeah. more about developing players, but it's basically. also taken a lot serious. Yeah, it's I mean they sell though. tickets, and it's a big thing yeah. in the communities yeah. and the towns, and and it's you know it's all over. Especially Canada. the small towns in Canada, yeah. this is this is their outlet. Exactly, this so. is this is something that it, there's a lot of civic pride involved in these teams, also yeah. because the families who live in these towns house these kids. Right, these kids are coming in from all over Canada, and it's. And that way, it's like a minor leagues with with wake, like with baseball, let's say, where you have host families, like and, the single A, you know, the right. uh, the cyclone very, players, yeah, like very low. And I think the minor duck leagues. players, yeah. even they they, yeah. they have families they stay with. Exactly, exactly. And uh, quickly, brother, we have a minute. Um, Manchester City, you know, Manchester City disappoints me. They were supposed to win the title this week. They were supposed to beat Manchester United and clinch the Premier League earlier than any team has ever done it. And what they do? They choked. Okay. Manchester United three, Manchester City two, just choke. Well. And so now Manchester City plays Tottenham this week. Manchester United plays West Brom. So they're probably not going to clinch this week either, and I'm not saying that because City's playing Tottenham, but Manchester United will beat West Brom because West Brom is going to relegation. They're in last place in the Premier League. They're in 20th. Uh, so even even if Manchester City beats Tottenham, which I don't think they will, but even if they do – um, Manchester United is going to win that game, so it's going to it's going to extend it for another week, because they'll both get the three points. So, this is very disappointing, Manchester City. You you you're better. You're supposed to be better than that. Um, very quickly, Tottenham beat Stoke. Another goal for Harry Kane. It went in off his shoulder, but whatever. It's a goal. It's a goal. And uh, your Liverpool, my Liverpool, took, took a draw with Everton in the uh, Merseyside derby. A uh, very disappointing result for Liverpool. They're now actually tied with Tottenham at 67 points, but Tottenham has a game in hand. So basically Tottenham is in third place. Um, and Chelsea also drew with West Ham. Poor result for Chelsea. Ah, wow, okay. That just about does it for From the Press Box. My name is Rob Leonard, and my co-host, of course, is award-winning sports writer and my brother. Give you a name. Tim Leonard. I thought you forgot my name for a second. I, didn't. I was like, I, giving you a look. Like, what's was, that about? I was changing my outro. And it, it, yeah, well, you got to let me know when you do these well, things. I, you know, I ad lib, brother. Follow. You follow. Know, maybe, like, point at me. Follow or me as you should, as the older brother. I, I, you, you, you call you, it ad libbing. I'm calling it guessing. I, I'm, I'm the older brother. Just follow. Uh, I, will, I will always lead you to the right I was place. following. I was letting you talk. I know. I know. Whatever. Anyway, coming up next at 10 o'clock, the Good Gold Show with Big Ed. So keep it tuned here at WHPC. And then after that's Retro Mix with Colton. So don't even touch your dial. I'll see you Friday with Beatles songs. I will see you with Tim next week with more from the Press Box right here on WHPC.
The views expressed on air are not necessarily those of WHBC, its management, or Nassau Community College. Responsible opposing viewpoints will be considered by emailing them to whpc at ncc.edu or...